The beginning of the movie takes place at a beach. Your protagonist, Hannah, is flying a kite while talking to her sister, Shirley, about a previous date experience. Shirley thinks that the guy she matched her sister with is a nice guy. However, Hannah points out that all that guy talked about was his real estate business and how rich he was. She thinks that while he's indeed a nice guy, he's not her type. Brian, Shirley's husband, joins the conversation. He agrees with Hannah regarding her previous date not being a good fit for her. The topic shifts to Hannah's upcoming birthday party. Shirley mentions that Brian already has an amazing menu prepared, and that the guest list is great. Hannah, though, thinks that such a grand birthday party is excessive. After they finish talking, Hannah and the couple separate to do their own thing. Hannah goes to the kite festival venue to register for a competition. She meets an old friend, a lawyer named Katie Longhorn. She finds out that Katie's law firm is sponsoring the competition. After some pleasantries, Katie gives her the instructions on how to register and points her to where to go. Moments later, we see Gavin McQueen arrive at the venue, together with his daughter, Parker. Gavin is explaining to Parker how she is too young to be a babysitter, despite having experience with dog sitting. For a brief moment, Gavin bumps into Katie, his ex-girlfriend. The atmosphere is a little awkward as the two start catching up. We find out that Gavin used to work in Chicago, but recently moved back to his hometown. While the two are having a conversation, Parker decides to explore the place. Parker eventually meets Hannah when she asks to pet a dog named Rusty. Hannah asks Parker if she is also registering for the kite festival. Parker reveals that it's her dad who is joining, and that they have just moved into town. When Parker mentions that she doesn't know how to fly a kite yet, Hannah lets the kid borrow her kite, and teaches her how to fly it. Back at Gavin and Katie, we find out that Katie is the lawyer doing the paperwork for Gavin's house title transfer. She is surprised that his parents never mentioned that to him. Before Gavin leaves to join Parker, Katie insists that they exchange numbers. It's obvious that she still likes him and wants to rekindle something with him. Gavin goes to where his daughter is and watches her fly a kite. When the kite finally lands, he talks to Hannah and compliments the kite's design. When Hannah introduces herself, Gavin mentions that he remembers her as Shirley's younger sister. They talk about how Hannah looked very different back then because she used to wear glasses. Gavin also remembers that Hannah used to take music lessons from his mother. That's when she reveals that she is now a music teacher herself. When the topic shifts to the kite championship, Gavin discovers that Hannah is the reigning kite flying champion, a title that Gavin once held. After their conversation, Hannah heads back home, and Gavin signs up for the festival. The next scene takes place in Hannah's home during her birthday party. She and Shirley briefly talk about Gavin. Brian butts in to give more information about the man. He reveals Gavin is a widower, which is the reason why he decided to move back to his hometown. Later, Hannah sees the realtor she went on a date with a few days ago. She finds out that Shirley was the one who invited him. He mentions how she didn't call him back, and this makes the conversation awkward. She fakes a smile as she makes up an excuse for not contacting him. Fortunately, Hannah's dad arrives to take her out of the awkward situation. Hannah's father gives her a gift, a pendant that was once worn by her late mother. She thought that her father was saving that gift for the day she had a child. Her father tells her he feels it's the perfect time to give it to her. He also tells her that the gift is a way for her mother to be with her in spirit. Hannah's dad then asks her to perform a song with him, a song that was written by her mother. She takes her spot in front of a piano, and her father plays the guitar. Hannah proceeds to sing a serene song that moves everyone at the party. After the party, she goes back to her music room. She stares at a picture of her mother, which makes her feel sentimental. In the next scene, we see Gavin decorating his living room. Parker enters the room and asks permission to go to the beach. He gives her an old kite and asks her if she wants to try flying it. Next, we see Hannah finishing a tutoring session with one of her students. After the child leaves, she tries calling for her dog, but he is nowhere to be seen. Back at the beach, we see Gavin and Parker enjoying some father and daughter quality time. Parker is flying her kite, while Gavin goes to the water to surf. During this scene, we see Rusty approach Parker. Hannah arrives at the scene and sees her dog playing with the little girl. Gavin goes back to shore and comments on how Hannah's dog and Parker make good friends. Hannah mentions how her dog usually escapes and wanders the beach. After a short pause, Gavin invites Hannah to drink some lemonade at his home. While walking, Gavin and Hannah get to know each other more. He finds out that she often plays the piano when teaching music, and she finds out that he is having trouble decorating his house. Gavin takes the opportunity to ask Hannah for advice on what painting to hang in his living room. Upon arriving at his home, they try hanging one particular painting in different parts of his house, but it doesn't blend well in any of those places. Gavin decides to put it aside instead. Hannah notices a strange item in Gavin's wood workshop. He tells her that it's a tetrahedral kite. Gavin then mentions his father's passion for making kites. He also reveals that making kites as a kid inspired him to become a woodworker. Hannah notices some of the work that Gavin has done, and she is impressed by them. She then asks him if she could commission a table for her sister's restaurant. She wants to give it to Shirley for her 10th wedding anniversary. Later, Hannah helps Gavin unpack some of his stuff from a box. While taking out some items, Hannah sees a picture of Gavin's late wife, who passed away a few years back. 
They talk about how hard it has been for him, but Gavin shares that it gets easier to move as time passes by, and he feels like his life is going back to normal nowadays. Out of the blue, Gavin asks Hannah if she can give Parker some music lessons, in exchange for the table she requested. Hannah thinks she is getting the better end of the deal, since Parker also volunteered to be Rusty's dog sitter. She happily accepts Gavin's offer. In the next scene, we see Gavin talking to his mother, Margaret. Parker is there too, and they are all talking about Hannah. Margaret remembers Hannah as a talented girl when it came to music. She has nothing but positive things to say about her. Gavin mentions to his mother how he and Hannah met at the festival registration. Margaret gives an approving smile, thinking that her son might find a new lover soon. Moments later, Gavin goes to the workshop and sees his father working on a kite. His old man calls it a single line delta. Gavin's dad tells him that he loves the woodworking shop, and that he's glad they could be together again to work there. Gavin reassures his dad that even though he is buying the house, his dad is still welcome to work at the shop, and use it whenever he wants. Outside the workshop, Gavin's father reveals that the kite he just made is for Parker, for the competition. During lunch, Margaret brings up Katie, and asks Gavin if she has contacted him about the house transfer. Gavin confirms that Katie indeed contacted him, but asks his parents why she's the lawyer they hired, knowing their past. This is when Parker finds out that her father used to date Katie, back when he was in high school. We also find out that the reason they broke up was because of Katie's strong and domineering personality. By the end of their lunch, Parker mentions that she will take a music lesson with Hannah while her dad is working. She is also very excited to spend time with Rusty on the same day. The next day, Hannah arrives at Gavin's home and picks up Parker. Later, Hannah stops by her sister's restaurant for a short while. Shirley playfully tells Hannah that Gavin might be available for a relationship. Brian joins the conversation, adding that she and Gavin would be a great couple. Hannah doesn't believe that Brian's hunches are accurate, and insists that she is happy being single. Still, her sister urges her to at least try having dinner or going on casual dates with Gavin. To get her sister to stop, Hannah promises to keep the suggestions in mind. After that, she asks about the space in the restaurant, and takes some notes regarding the measurement of the table she'll gift them. In the next scene, Gavin visits Katie's office to sign some papers. She hands him the paperwork, and tells him that her services are free of charge for him and his family. However, in return, she wants him and his parents to have dinner with her. Gavin gives her a confused look, but tells her that he'll bring it up with his parents. Later that day, Hannah brings Parker home while Gavin is working at his workshop. They have a brief conversation about the intricacies of a kite. He tells her about his windsurfing hobby and how it's like the grown-up version of flying a kite. They take their conversation outside near the beach, and she hands him the measurements for the table. They laugh at the fact that the measurements are barely legible, since they are written on a napkin. At one point, Gavin asks Hannah what she's doing on the weekend, to see if he can tag along with her. She tells him that she'll be picking blueberries. Then after a brief pause, she tells Gavin he's welcome to join her. In the following scenes, we witness Gavin, Hannah, and Parker enjoying their time with outdoor activities. They also enjoy ice cream and film dancing videos together. Overall, they look like a happy family having a good time. When they sit down to rest, Hannah shares how she and her mother used to go to the berry fields all the time, until she passed away. The little girl sympathizes with Hannah, and they give each other a warm hug. Parker expresses her gratitude towards Hannah for showing her a special place. Later that day, we see Gavin and Hannah walking together while dragging their bikes. Gavin mentions that it's been a while since he walked that path with a pretty girl. Not knowing how to react to that, Hannah asks about his relationship with Katie, but Gavin deflects and asks her about her history instead. She tells him about her past relationship, and how it didn't work out. We find out that Hannah preferred staying in town to be close to her family, while her ex wanted to go to New York to explore. They didn't want the same thing, so their relationship didn't work out. Gavin makes a comment about how he, too, prefers to have his family close by. We see them give each other an affectionate look as the romantic tension builds up. Before they part ways, Gavin asks Hannah if she wants to go out for dinner at a pizza place. She agrees, on the condition that they also drink. Later, Gavin and Hannah go out for a dinner date. Both of them look dashing. It turns out that the place Gavin wanted to eat at is Brian and Shirley's restaurant. When they arrive, Brian and Shirley give them a warm greeting and shower them with compliments. During the dinner, Hannah and Gavin talk about how Brian and Shirley met and got married during the kite festival. Brian interrupts their conversation to hint that they should take some time to dance. Hannah tries to make an excuse about not being a good dancer, but Gavin has other ideas. He gets up and invites her to dance, since it would be rude of her to decline, she gives in. While they are dancing, Katie arrives and spots them. Out of jealousy, she rudely approaches them to make small talk. Katie finds out that Hannah and Gavin are neighbors. During the conversation, she brings up that Gavin still owes her a date. She does this in the hopes of upsetting Hannah. To defuse the situation, Gavin promises Katie that he'll schedule their dinner some other time. Katie then promptly leaves, hoping that her passive-aggressive move worked. In the next scene, Hannah is talking to her sister about Gavin and Katie. Shirley reassures her that Gavin and Katie don't have anything in common. 
However, she points out that Hannah has to step up in order to win Gavin over. Hannah, though, is not trying to compete. The conversation is interrupted when Gavin shows up with Parker for her music lesson. Shirley quickly exits to give her sister a moment with Gavin. Later, Gavin tells Hannah that he is going to a dinner with Katie and his parents. It's just a friendly meeting. Hannah offers to take care of Parker while he's out. She doesn't say it, but her expression shows how anxious she is upon hearing Katie's name. In the next scene, Hannah and Parker begin the tutoring session. Hannah talks about lyrics and how they are often used to tell stories. Then Parker shares a song that she wrote for her best friend. Hannah helps her finish the lyrics to the song, and they sing it together. Back at the law firm, we see Gavin meeting up with Katie. She suddenly tells him that his parents aren't going to make it, so they should just go have dinner, just the two of them. Gavin thinks it's odd, given that he just spoke to his parents that morning, and they confirmed their attendance. However, he doesn't think too much about it, and goes with her anyway. Gavin and Katie reminisce about past events during their dinner date. After eating, Gavin is eager to leave, since he wants to tuck Parker in for bedtime. Katie makes a comment about how the kid is too old for such a thing, and Gavin lets the comment slide. After a brief exchange, Gavin finds out that Katie isn't the type of person who is fond of children. She thinks they tend to take advantage of their parents. Gavin points out that Parker is not the type of kid to do that. Katie tries to get on Gavin's good side by praising his daughter. However, he is caught off guard when she mentions that Parker would be a great stepdaughter. Gavin tells Katie that finding a stepmother isn't something that has ever crossed his mind. Katie is trying too hard to show herself as a potential partner, but Gavin is oblivious to what the woman is trying to do. Later that night, since Gavin isn't home yet, Hannah is the one tucking Parker into bed. Parker showers Hannah with kind words. The child thinks that Hannah is a great person, and if ever she makes a family of her own, they would be lucky to have her. Hannah is touched by the compliment, so she gives Parker a hug. When Gavin arrives home, he sees Hannah sleeping on the couch. He thanks her for watching Parker while he's out. She then asks him about his date. He clarifies that it wasn't a date. Rather, he was just repaying Katie for not charging for the work she did. Before Hannah goes home, with Katie's words on his mind, Gavin asks her if she thinks it's weird that he still tucks in Parker. Hannah reassures him that it's only natural for him to do so, since he is Parker's only parent. Lastly, they agree to go out together the next day, to look for materials for the table he is making. Later, Gavin goes to Parker's room. The kid asks her father to join her in an evening prayer. After that, she asks him if their family will ever change. When he asks her to clarify, Parker explains that she would be happy if they would add a new member to the family. The next day, Hannah and Gavin meet a lovely woman named Betty Ann. After exchanging pleasantries, she tells them that she has some leftover materials in her garage and offers to give them to them. While searching for usable materials, Hannah spots an old kite-making book. She flips through its pages and spots her favorite quote. According to the book, if a kite is built with love, it will soar high, depending on how strong that love is. As they continue their search, we see them dance and have fun with some hats. The romantic tension in the air thickens as they lock eyes. To ease the tension, Gavin cracks a joke. After that, they spot a large plank, which is the perfect material they need for the table. After placing the wood in his truck, Gavin tells Hannah an inspiring story. He tells her about the time he met a homeless man who was capable of creating amazing wooden art out of old wood. He later found out that the man wasn't homeless, since he was selling his artwork for a high price. Gavin explains that that man made him realize that he can always make better things, regardless of how old the material is. He also mentions that people, too, are capable of transforming into better versions of themselves. Unfortunately, Hannah and Gavin's moment is interrupted by an unnecessary phone call from Katie. The next scene shows Hannah and Shirley at the end of their afternoon jog. They are talking about Katie and how it's obvious that she is chasing Gavin. Shirley tells Hannah not to give up until it is confirmed that Katie and Gavin are dating. Then the conversation shifts to gifts for Brian and how Shirley plans to spend her wedding anniversary. She tells Hannah they'll celebrate at the kite festival, since their family will be there anyway. After Shirley leaves, Hannah bumps into Katie. They briefly talk about the upcoming festival. Suddenly, Katie makes an offhand comment implying that Hannah is a babysitter for Gavin. Hannah clarifies that she is a music teacher. However, Katie maintains her condescending tone. She thanks Hannah for babysitting Parker, in a way that makes it seem like she's the child's stepmother. Her comment makes Hannah uncomfortable. In the next scene, we see Gavin talking to his father and telling him about some of the things he's been up to. After that, they head outside to surprise Parker. Her grandfather gives her the kite he's been working on. She thanks him and gives him a hug. Then Hannah politely excuses herself to go to her music lesson. Her grandmother asks her to invite Hannah over, since it's been a long time since Gavin's parents had seen her. Shortly after Parker leaves, Margaret asks her son if he has gotten close to Hannah, implying something romantic. Gavin answers in an innocent way, stating that Hannah is a special person. Margaret, satisfied with the answer, smiles. After the music lesson, Hannah and Parker return to Gavin's home to meet his parents. Margaret gives Hannah a hug, and they catch up on what's been happening recently. Hannah describes how she loves spending time with Parker. Suddenly, we see Katie arrive uninvited at Gavin's home. 
When no one answers the front door, she goes around the house. Katie sees everyone and greets them, catching them off guard. Her excuse for coming is to give Gavin the title to the house. When Katie sees Parker, she gives her a gift. Hannah feels awkward about being there while Katie is around, so she makes an excuse to leave. Despite the family asking her to stay for dinner, Hannah doesn't, insisting that she has something else to do. In reality, she doesn't want to be around Katie. In the next scene, we see Hannah talking on the phone with her sister. She rants about her encounter with Katie. Shirley advises Hannah that she should go back to Gavin's home and tell him how she really feels. Meanwhile, back at Gavin's home, his parents prepare to leave. Margaret talks to her son and tells him that he should be honest with himself. She knows that her son is aware that she's referring to finding new love. They hug each other before parting ways. Meanwhile, Katie puts a painting in the living room. Gavin doesn't think it fits and mentions that he's tried that spot before with the same painting. Katie points out that the painting is expensive. Gavin doesn't care and even offers to give it to her if she wants it. Later, we see Hannah arrive at Gavin's home, with the intention of finally confessing her feelings. However, when she arrives at the front door she sees Katie and Gavin together, and she thinks they are having a romantic moment. Hannah accidentally bumps into some pots and makes noise, so Gavin goes outside to check. When Hannah and Gavin see each other, she tries to lie about looking for her dog at first. Eventually, she confesses that she likes him. However, she also tells him to forget what she said, because she misread the situation. Hannah thinks she's interrupting Gavin and Katie's moment, so she makes an excuse to leave. Gavin is stumped and unsure how to respond, so he doesn't question Hannah any further. When Gavin goes back inside, he confronts Katie. This is when he finds out that Katie had been assuming that there was something going on between them. He quickly clarifies that they are not headed toward a romantic relationship. Katie leaves the house, embarrassed and disappointed. In the following scenes, we see Gavin and Hannah continuing with their daily lives. However, this time around, Hannah is actively avoiding going to Gavin's home again. Parker even wonders when she'll come to visit. At one point, Hannah's dad visits her and asks her if she's okay. She opens up about what's troubling her. Her dad tells her a story about how he met her mother. At the end of the story, he encourages Hannah to follow her heart. He also reassures Hannah that Gavin might be feeling the same way towards her. In the next scene, we see Gavin polishing a table, the one that Hannah commissioned. Parker arrives and asks him about Hannah. She's wondering why she isn't visiting lately. She likes Hannah, and she likes that her father seems happier whenever Hannah is around. Gavin admits to his daughter that he likes Hannah too, and decides that they should go to her and tell her how they feel. Gavin and Parker arrive at the festival venue to participate in the event. His father is there too, and hands him a tetrahedron kite, the same kite that Gavin used to fly when he was a kid. The announcer announces the beginning of the competition. The novice kite flyers are set to compete first. This is when Parker meets Hannah at the beach. After exchanging greetings, Parker goes on to compete and win in her respective division. This makes Gavin and her grandparents proud of her. After that, it's the experts' turn to compete. This is when Gavin and Hannah finally meet again at the beach. They have a short conversation before the competition begins. During the tournament, kites start falling one by one, until only two remain. We see Hannah and Gavin side by side, trying to best each other, and seeing whose kite can fly up longer. This lasts for over an hour until, finally, Gavin's kite loses altitude. Hannah is crowned the new kite flying champion. After the competition, Katie shows up and talks to Hannah. She apologizes to her for what she said in the past. Katie admits that her past behavior was driven by jealousy. Hannah accepts her apology, and they proceed to the awards ceremony. After giving awards to the novice competitors, the announcer declares Gavin as the first runner-up. He takes the mic and gives a speech about his family and their passion for making kites. He talks about his old kite and the values it represents. He also shares the reason why he moved back to town. After that, he calls Hannah to join him on stage and receive her award as the champion. Fast forward to Shirley and Brian's wedding party, and we see Gavin polishing the table he made. Hannah and the couple approach him, and he informs the couple that he made the table for them. Brian and Shirley initiate a group hug to show their appreciation. Seconds later, Parker arrives to give Hannah a gift made by Gavin. She opens the gift and sees a miniature model of a complex kite. Gavin recites Hannah's favorite quote as a way to confess his feelings. The quote states that, if a kite is made for someone who holds someone's heart, the kite will soar with the love that fostered its creation. Gavin points out that love is indeed the one that fostered the creation of his gift. After that, they stare at each other lovingly, knowing that their feelings are mutual. Then, both of them move in for a kiss. 